But there's a uh, reporter named Adrian Kowskio, and um, he's written for NBC News, BuzzFeed, New Republic, Intercept. Um, and he has a thread. It's very extended, which starts out by talking about how folks don't understand, white folks don't understand the implications of this in the way that the Latino community understands it, or they don't, or just simply saying that it's very, very difficult to understand the fear that is running through um, the Latino community right now. Well, Regardless realize, of what's that? When you realize that the people who believe in this ideology are like pillars of the community you live in, that's terrifying. Right. Well, it's also, I mean, just the, I mean, I can tell you this that, like, you know, when there's a, um, a shooting, let's say, at a Pittsburgh uh, synagogue, and I, I don't go to synagogue uh, very often, but if it's near uh, the high holidays, it occurs to me like I'm a little bit nervous about just going to temple, you know, particularly with my kids and the idea that. You know, and, and often they bring extra security. But as I'm walking around, there's few places where, and apparently these uh, white supremacists, they really like to target the cultural Jews, right? Sort of like what uh, Ben Shapiro was explaining that dynamic uh, for us. But nevertheless, but when I go to the supermarket or when I go... I, wherever it is I go to shop or to eat or, or, or hang out, I'm not gathering at a place that is known for the gathering of a bunch of cultural Jews. And however, no, because I'm white. And, but there are areas where obviously there are, it's, where there's higher density of Latinos. And it's not just that temple, you know, it's this guy knows he can go to the mall or there are cities that have higher percentages that, I mean, it's, um, and so people are afraid. They're literally afraid to leave their homes. And, and then you see the, the guy posts this just a couple of uh, posts, but then he starts getting tons of DMs to, uh, from, from different people. Thank you for posting this thread on fear in Latino communities. I'm white. My wife is Latina. We have two kids under the age of three. We live in Austin. We're afraid to take them to public places because of this kind of stuff. Her parents are immigrants and legal citizens, and we fear every time they travel, someone will accuse them of being illegal and report them. Uh, and that their citizenship won't matter because they're brown with thick accents and speak better Spanish than English. We already have stories of multiple kids who have been taken into custody for weeks at a time. We only hear about it when it's weeks at a time. Never mind they were taken for an hour or a day or a night. You can bet if there are stories of nine-year-old kids, 16-year-old kids being taken into custody by ICE for weeks at a time, that we're going to hear stories of, uh, that, that there are stories of adults and other kids who are there for a night, for an hour, they're stopped, whatever it is. Um, and on top of that, when... The standard becomes you can go shoot up people at a mall. This story, Adrian, uh, my husband, uh, writing to him, my husband is a U.S. born physician and of Mexican descent. We're at a Home Depot in a white community. A white woman picked a verbal fight with him as he stood in the light bulb aisle telling him to go back to Mexico. When he told her he, he was a physician and U.S. born, she laughed hysterically and accused him of fake news. I mean... If the worst thing you can do is suddenly shoot 20 people and dead and 30 others wounded, if that's the worst, then, you know, 
approaching some guy in uh, the Home Depot aisle because he looks um, brown and uh, laughing at him that he shouldn't be in this country. That's virtually nothing, right, in terms of what the standards are. So, I mean, this is what this community is facing, and it's very, you know, I can sit here in uh, Brooklyn and be horrified at the the gun violence, but worried sort of generically when my daughter goes to school, my son goes to camp or whatever it is. Uh, but you have a, 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 a community, a huge number of people in this country who are being terrorized. And when they look to the president, when they look to the head of the U.S. government, right, like to the extent that we have a head of our society, it's the president. And this is what you get from the U.S. president. Play this as number one, right? Like, think about this. You, you have a community that has been targeted and they just want a sense that at least society is on our side. Play this. And we'll be meeting with uh, first responders, law enforcement, uh, some of the victims, and paying my respects and regards. I'll be going with the first lady. And it's a terrific uh, opportunity, really, to congratulate some of the the police and law enforcement, the job they've done was incredible. Yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll, now, to be fair, he did say, he did mention some of the victims. But the idea, I mean, this guy, you know, best case scenario can say horribly incompetent, right? Just does not care about human suffering. He has shown this before. I mean, I, I'm surprised he's not going to bring down a bunch of uh, paper towels to throw out to people. He might make them feel better about themselves. School supplies. Right. Bulletproof vest. Catch it. Catch it. Bulletproof vest. But people should be aware. And, you know, I mean, if you're if you're Stephen Miller and uh, you're in the Trump administration and you're looking back on your three years and you think about how you terrorize the Muslim population in this country, you think about how you've terrorized the immigrant population, just broadly speaking, you, you, you think about how the Latino population is, has been terrorized, right? From being called uh, rapists, uh, gang members, to uh, terrorists, um, to you know, invading the country, to infesting the country. Um, you're gonna be in that White House, you could be thinking like, we're doing a bang up job. We're doing exactly what we set out to do. We also have that other component where we deconstruct the administrative state, that's, um, that's happening. But in terms of striking terror in this country amongst brown people, we've done it. We've also unshackled the, um, all the police departments around the country, given them the, uh, the green light. Don't worry, Department of Justice will not be interfering with any of your stuff. I mean, that's what the agenda of this uh, administration has been, and it's uh, been successful. It's been highly successful. And we're only three quarters of the way through it, folks. Not even. We're three quarters of the way through it in January of, of, of 2020. If only we were three quarters of the way through uh, the foundational white supremacy that exists in this country. Well, we may be, we may be three quarters of the way through that, but it's still, um, it's still talking about like another 75 years of, uh, of, wow. we still got a while ahead of us. I don't know. I mean, we're definitely, have we progressed? Yes. To a certain extent. Um, still hovering in the mid forties though, to elect someone like this. And, um, I don't know that we're ever going to get to a place where we we eradicate this type of stuff, but we can make it marginalized and looked down upon enough 
to give people who are subjects of this kind of terror some peace and some sense of security and some sense of belonging and some ability to live their daily lives without fear, without wondering, like, you know, why, why is that guy staring at me? Um, there is a, you know, I, I mean, none of what I'm saying is, is in any way sort of uh, uh, profound in any way. But there is, look, there's obviously like the, the, the scars of the the foundational racism of this country and then the ongoing right like through you know just institute not even institutional governmental through the mid 20th century um you know that leaves uh scars that will be with us and by us i mean with like the african-american population uh for a long long time Stuff doesn't flush out of the system. Uh, that's just human beings don't work that way. You know, you, know you, can't, you can't have a situation where everybody's like, okay, everybody born uh, starting in 2020, we're going to take you away from your parents for uh, 10 or 15 years. Get through your developmental ages so that we can sort of like try and release some of all the, uh, the scars they get passed down from generation to generation and the hatreds they get pa- passed down from generation to generations. Um, it takes a long st- time for that stuff to filter, filter through the society. And um, Donald Trump, frankly, <clears throat> in this era, like obviously... None of this is new, but there was an activation and it didn't just come from Trump. It came from Obama, his existence, the fact that a black guy got elected and the ability of of people like uh, who surround Donald Trump and uh, Fox News and uh, Mitch McConnell and others to exploit that. To take this. um, I don't want to say dormant, but. Certainly submerged. Racism, which is not, I, I'm not diminishing, obviously, how bad it was, but I'm just saying, like, there's momentum to this now. Like, the momentum is going the wrong way. And that's going to take uh, a long time to reverse. Just the momentum, never mind the actual uh, problems that we have as as a country in terms of race and these issues.